This is the Weather Extreme video for January the 1st, 2010. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters and Happy New Year to everyone out there. How about let's going down under for a shot of the fireworks over Sydney Harbor and uh, just wow, isn't that amazing? Quite a fireworks display they had down there last night to usher in the new year. All right, let's move from down under to the top of Alabama. And there's a look at Mount Cheeha. They're in the clouds this morning. Uh, and the cold air is certainly on its way. Clouds still visible at Tuscaloosa, although we can see a couple of breaks there uh, in the clouds. Uh, and uh, we see some clouds uh, over the buildings in downtown Birmingham. And an uh, interesting shot of some clouds up at Hamilton as they're beginning to show some breaks in the clouds up there. And certainly uh, Hamilton is going to get some of that cold air, and they're already beginning to get some of that cold air this morning. All right, on our surface map, uh, we've got a little bit of a low in the Gulf, which is going to produce some thunderstorms across the Florida Peninsula. And uh, the cold air certainly being ushered in by the 1041 high you see over Canada. And uh, we'll see that those temperatures up there are quite cold. The short wave is moving through the, Missis the lower and middle Mississippi River Valley this morning. That's going to be zipping across the southeastern U.S. today. And that should clear us out, but also chill us down. It's going to be very cold. Look at those temperatures up there in uh, south central Canada. Minus 30s and below. Woo, woo, that's cold. I tell you, I think you'd need a jacket if you went outside in that weather. And certainly going to be cold. And remember, there's a huge area of snow north of us, so it's going to be tough for this air to modify much. On our... Uh, Temperature map of the central uh, Alabama area. Notice that Nashville's 23 and Montgomery is 43. Wow, 20 degree difference in there. So uh, the cold air definitely in Tennessee, and that's going to be coming down into Alabama. And uh, as it does, this is going to be one of those days where the temperature is either not going to rise much or it's going to fall uh, for much of the day. The uh, a little bit of rain came through ahead of that shortwave trough uh, overnight. I think I had 0.04 in my house. And uh, so, but that's going to be sweeping on out. Uh, it's down in the vicinity of Montgomery and Auburn, uh, the I-85 corridor, but uh, that should be sweeping on out of here. Not too many advisories, a few in the uh, Appalachians there and uh, wind advisories in Florida ahead of that surface low. Some uh, winter weather advisories in uh, the northwestern United States. And I noticed a blizzard warning in effect for Maine and uh, much of, oh, I think all of Maine and a good portion of the northern half of uh, New Hampshire and Vermont. QPF-wise, not expecting much rain over the next five days and probably uh, not at least until uh, uh, Thursday or Friday. And then it's going to be a question of what form that precipitation is going to take. Storm Prediction Center is watching uh, the area of the Florida Peninsula for the possibility of some severe weather, but they're not outlooking a specific area. But when you see the term C-text, it means that uh, they are watching something. All right, here's the 06 GFS model run, and here's our surface map for today at uh, noon. You can see the 540 line down in the vicinity of uh, central Alabama, oh, in the vicinity of about uh, Clanton, it looks like. And at 500 millibars, our, our closed low is out over uh, the uh, mid-Atlantic states by uh, Saturday at midday, the 2nd of January, and uh, that uh, spinning up a pretty good storm out in the Atlantic, and that is uh, bringing some more snow to New England. And uh, notice that we're, we're chilling down as the 540 lines uh, is at least into central Alabama. We see uh, as that closed low stays anchored uh, off the uh, New England coast there, we see uh, pieces of energy rotating around that, and uh, the uh, northerly flow steepens a little bit, and each one of those little pieces of energy is helping to reinforce the cold air so that uh, by Sunday the 3rd, the, the uh, cold air is firmly implanted across the uh, eastern half of the country. And, and just note the 540 line is now down in the vicinity of Mobile. Uh, we can see that the cold air sticks with us on Monday. That could be our coldest day uh, of the winter season and of 2010 as well as we uh, see the 540 line down into the Gulf of Mexico. Get a little bit of a reprieve, but not enough to you know uh, really take to the bank or write home about. But we see the 540 line as a, kind of a guide there where the cold air is uh, in, uh, implanted. We can see that uh, 
the uh, 540 line migrates north just a little bit. Now, some changes coming about at midweek, and here we go. We're, we're under a bit of a, a zonal flow with a little bit of a ridge. You can see that ridge up into the uh, Great Lakes area, but we're developing uh, or we're, we're showing a really uh, strong shortwave trough moving down the uh, eastern side of the west coast ridge. And that is going to play havoc with the central U.S. Uh, and the eastern U.S. eventually uh, toward the end of this uh, upcoming week, the first week of 2010. And uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we will be staying dry for Wednesday the 6th, it appears. Now, that uh, drops into the uh, middle Mississippi River Valley with a closed low situated over about Illinois. And with that closed low, we see, uh, and the, and the uh, strong trough, we see the cold air just dig down into Texas uh, and Louisiana, and we also see a surface low in the Gulf of Mexico. And that surface low could create some wintry uh, weather problems for the southeastern United States. Now, it's a little too early. We're, this is, this is uh, six days out. It's a little too early uh, to forecast some specifics on this, but uh, it certainly looks like it would be a good idea to stick a wintry mix or some sort of a winter precipitation into the forecast uh, for Thursday and potentially uh, Friday as it, it edges on out. By Friday, we do dry out, but notice now the 540 line is back into the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, with that, uh, the cold air just uh, is, is sticking around solidly with us, and it stays even into uh, the second weekend of 2010, January the 9th. All right, now let's get out into voodoo. And um, the things that are important in voodoo is the trends. And, and certainly, I think uh, one of the trends that we continue to see with the GFS is the, uh, the active pattern. And here comes another uh, strong trough through the flow around the 12th. And that is uh, forecast to uh, produce another surface low. This one a little further to the north, but that certainly looks like the possibility of snow for uh, parts of uh, the southeastern U.S. and uh, perhaps even, uh, you know, depending on specifics, the, uh, heaven forbid, an ice storm. So, But we're overdue for one of those. We haven't had one since the 80s around here that has been that significant. Now, we do see at the end of the period uh, a, a slight moderation to the overall pattern. Uh, the southern stream still remains active with that little short wave you see uh, in the Arklatex, and then we uh, also notice uh, the closed low in south-central Canada in the western Great Lakes area. Uh, and uh, for us, it looks like uh, maybe some uh, clouds and some light precipitation with a good deal of snow across uh, the northern tier of the United States. So the, the bottom line is, even in the uh, long range, the GFS is forecasting a good uh, active pattern. So uh, we've got plenty of chances, uh, and it's uh, looking like we may see something. We'll be watching the specifics on that, so stay tuned to the blog for uh, all of the latest in weather information. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in. We'll have the next one posted by around 8 o'clock on Saturday morning. In the meantime, Happy New Year. Each day there are new stories to tell about the people who live here and the place we call home. All of the faith. Sharing your stories on ABC 3340, Alabama's news leader.